We've got two different approaches to making a gimbal. Zion have gone for more features with the Webill 3, whereas DJI have opted for a no fuss design with the RS3, focusing on convenience and usability. And these two differences are what make this an interesting comparison video. I'm gonna award points to the winner of each category, but instead of using gold stars, I'm gonna use slices of pizza, because A, I'm hungry, and two, why not? Pizza points. Now this one is the clear winner for me, but I'm gonna tell you why later on. But which one is better for you? Let's find out. First thing I noticed when I opened the box was the size of the Zion Webill 3 case. Don't get me wrong, I love it when products come with a bag. But we're talking about a compact small gimbal, not a bunch of basketballs. Look at the size of it. But the DJI one is that small I accidentally swallowed it. So the DJI case has compartments inside, making it easy to store things and access them when you need them. Look at the difference. Which one would you want to carry around with you? Plus, this one is a little bit more durable and padded, so I think it's going to keep it a bit more safe. Now obviously when you're transporting these gimbals about, you can lock the axes in place on both of them, which is a great feature, I've always liked that, so you, it's a smaller footprint, obviously if you take these handles off. But what I love about the DJI is the auto lock and unlock feature, which is just incredible. And I thought when that first came out, it was a bit gimmicky, but actually as soon as I started using it, I realized how beneficial it was because in between each shot, you can just pack it down really easily and it's gonna save you loads of time carry it like that it's just so much easier to work with you can even take the battery grip off of the rs3 so it compacts down even smaller so we've got a pizza slice point to dji on this first category there's pretty much nothing in it you can't tell a difference when you've got the accessories on the webill 3 with the handle and the wrist support they're both really good weighted gimbals especially for the size you can use them all day without getting fatigued really pizza slice to both of them here the DJI has a payload of up to three kilograms. What's odd is I couldn't find anything on the Zion website about the payload of the Webill 3, which I found bizarre. Tried to look on YouTube, nobody's really talking about it. That's not a great thing. Obviously it's meant for smaller cameras, but it did handle the setup that I use on the RS3. So as long as you're using a smallish setup, you'll be fine with the Webill 3. Now with the DJI, you actually get a little bit more motion on each axis. Obviously all of the axes don't spin 360 degrees, like the pan does, but the Webill 3 isn't far behind. Since the RS2 and the RS3, the motors are so much better than they used to be on the original Ronin, for example. The Webill 3 is a lot better than the 2 was. I have to say, the motors in this, I'm really impressed with. They're pretty much the same, to be fair. You can't really tell a difference between the two of them. They're both as smooth as each other. Because of the payload and because of the slight bit of extra movement, I'm going to award the pizza slice to DJI. Not being biased it's just that's where the pizza belongs the RS3 super easy to balance and it has this fine tuning knob on the side here to move your plate forward or backwards and I like that it's just a little bit of an extra touch to get that precision it took me a while to balance the camera on the Webill for the first time it was a little bit frustrating I don't know what was going on but it just wouldn't balance it might be because the arms are a little bit smaller or thinner I don't know and it also doesn't have the fine tuning adjustment so again point to the RS3 as you can see, when I unlock this main camera plate, that will slide forward so I can get the camera out, but it's got a safety lock on it. So if you do that by accident and the camera slips forward, it's not gonna fall out. The Zion doesn't have that, it slips straight out. It locks on the going backwards, but not forwards. A safety pizza slice point to the RS3 again. It, they both come with their own quick release plates, but I use these Filecam Ulanzi ones that they kindly sent me. I'll leave a link to those in the description. I use these on everything. They're so handy and it fits on both of these gimbals and most of my tripods as well. So you can either use the normal quick release plate or if you've got a bigger tripod, you can use this whole plate as well. Now personally, I really don't like the feeling of this grip, I feel it's too small. What happens here is my thumb is pushed up against this panel, it's really uncomfortable. It's just not in the best place if you want to try and press those buttons. It's really awkward, look at me. You like almost have to hold it with the other hand so you can move this about. Whereas if you've got that in one hand, it's really hard to move your thumb and get it in the right place. Don't like it at all, it's just 
yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, no. In my opinion, the DJI is just so comfortable to hold. Look at this, right? You grab the top handle, I'm just holding it like that, and the weight is directly in the center, which is where it needs to be. If you hold the, the Zion, look what happens. It should be like this, but it drops to one side because of where the handle is. It's not positioned in the middle. So you kind of have to keep your camera balanced with your right hand. It's just not right. But I will say, I'm gonna come on to this a little bit later, but the wrist support, I like. But the comfort category, clearly the winner is the DJI. DJI has a full color touchscreen display. It's nice and large, so you can navigate all the menus and all the functions really easily, super quick. When you wanna work fast, nothing slows you down. Everything's in the right place. Whereas this one, you've got a tiny little screen there. It's not a touchscreen, so you have to use this wheel on the side and navigate through the menus that way, and it just slows you down so much. It's not the most efficient way of setting things up. Again, pizza slice to the RS3. Vortex mode, or 360 roll as it's called on the DJI, they both have that mode. The Zion is really slow. It takes forever to do a full rotation. There's not much flexibility in that mode. It kind of, when you're using the joystick, you expect it to go one way, but it goes the opposite way. They've included an option to switch directions, but when I did that, it didn't work. It's just not quite there yet. It's like it's not ready yet, it doesn't work. Whereas the RS3 360 roll is a lot quicker and you can change the speed of it. Point to DJI, another pizza slice. Extra cheese. <laughs> Build quality, we all know what the DJI stuff's like. You cannot complain whatsoever. This one, it's not bad. They've definitely made an upgrade from the original Weeble, the Weeble S, that's for sure. The components aren't bad, but it's just the attention to detail. For example, this handle here, it's foam. It's not gonna last. It's, that is gonna wear away. If you compare the two triggers, listen to that. You know when you've pressed that trigger, it feels like it clicks in place, whereas this, Sometimes it's, it just doesn't feel right. There's just a little bit of work that needs doing, I think, to bring this up to the quality of what the DJI stuff is. Yeah, this is it's getting there, but it's not as professional looking as that. Look at this little handle thing there. That, it, does, it's, it just looks cheap. I'm sorry, pizza slice to DJI. RS3, 12 hour battery life which is great, but the Weebill 3 has a whopping 21 hours. Because of that, I'm gonna give a point to the Weebill 3. Take roughly two hours to charge. You can take the battery grip off of the RS3, charge that one while using another battery grip. And for that reason, on the battery category, I'm gonna give the DJI another pizza slice. So Zion have introduced a couple of accessories or features onto the Weebill 3. The built-in microphone and the built-in light. Let's discuss the light to begin with. It, it's good. I really like this actually. At first I thought, what are they doing? It's just a gimmick. They don't need it. It's going to look awful. Why would you need it anyway? But then having it, it's not bad actually. It goes from 2600 to 5400 Kelvin. So you can change the color temperature of the light. I think that's very good. It also comes with these colored filters or gels I've not taken them out of the packet yet a couple of different colors I think that's hilarious they might come in handy I think they just magnetize yeah they magnetize on it goes from 10 to 100 percent in 10 percent increments it would be nice if it went up a little bit smoother and you could have some of those in between values just to have a little bit more control over the brightness I will say that is something I would love to see on the next DJI gimbal then we've got the microphone it's not for serious audio you wouldn't record your, your dialogue with it it's only for a backup track or if you're doing like a music video it's, it's just used for, for your guide to sync up I don't see the point like what's the point because your camera has got a microphone built in anyway so it's gonna capture the audio you'd have to plug another extra cable in so it's one more thing to think about however I did think right we'll give it a chance we'll see how good it sounds put it to the test Bill this is the built-in microphone with the Weeble this is what it sounds like. I am an arm's length away. And then here we are, this is the audio from the camera. It seems a little bit louder, but we'll see what the difference is like. Not good. It's, it's clearer, there's less hiss, but it's muffled, so there's no point. They could have saved the money and the time they've spent to put that technology into this gimbal, put that towards making it even lighter. 
They could have made it out of carbon fiber. Pointless, in my opinion. Sorry, Zayun. For the light, I'm gonna give them half a pizza slice, but not for the mic. Um, no, stop it. You can obviously mount arms and accessories to the DJI. And there's loads of different accessories you can have. So you can build it out, put monitors on. I'm not sure what you can do with the Weebill 3, if I'm honest, because there's no mounting points here, but maybe you could take this arm off. I've not looked, to be honest, but they might do some extra arms that you can add on. I think there's an option to add a focus motor to this here. That's where you plug it in, but it doesn't come with one. I've obviously got the combo of both of these gimbals. The DJI does come with the focus wheel. That's a bonus, another pizza slice to DJI. That is what you want when you buy these combo versions. You want all the extras. Here we go, the wrist support. I really like it actually. It's a little bit uncomfortable at times. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it does make a massive difference. And when you take it off and you try and do that sort of shot without the wrist support, you realize how much weight is being put on your wrist. Love to see it in the DJI in the next one. A stuffed crust pizza slice to Zayun on that one. It's pretty close in price. The RS3 is a little bit more, but in my opinion, the quality is a lot higher. It's well worth paying that little bit extra for the quality of this gimbal and the ease of use. It's just a much more professional tool. However, if you did need the extra features, like the light, for example, then go for that. So let's tally up the pizza points and find out which is the winner. I mean, it's pretty obvious, isn't it, really? The Zion Weebill 3 has three and a half pizza points, and the RS3 has a whopping 11 pizza slice points. These gimbals are made for people like us who work alone or in small groups. Nothing should get in the way of you filming something. These are tools, they're meant to help you. They're not meant to hinder you. And DJI have kept the RS3 nice and simple. That was their mission statement, and they have achieved that mission, done really well with this gimbal. Absolute pleasure to use. I have to say, it, this is an interesting gimbal. It's been fun to have a look at it and to test it, but if you want a more in-depth look at the RS3, you can check out this video here.